But uh, yeah, let's give it up for Matt. Uh, he's an awesome guy. He is an author, former public relations intern for San Francisco 49ers, and has worked for two Fortune 500 companies. And he's also the founder of Talk Shop, with a mission to help students communicate effectively in any setting. So without further ado, let's give the floor to Matt. Thank you, Hanson, uh, and thank you, Katie, uh, as well, and, and Gina. And good morning, everyone. I hope wherever you are, you are staying cool. I see lots of fans on the screens, so I know we're all feeling it. Hey, I want to start with a quick question and just uh, actually, pardon me. I want to start with a quick comment, and then I've got a question. My comment is this. If you could please just have your video on, which I think is already good, but unmute yourself. The reason is, is I'm going to be asking you guys and girls some questions. So. It just helps things move along. If you could just have your, your audio uh, ready to go, that would be helpful. But I want to start with this. On a Monday morning, I'm giving you a pop quiz. Who here would like to take a guess? And before I ask the question, the beautiful thing about what I'm going to do here in the next 30 minutes, when I ask you all questions, there is no right or wrong answer. So that's pretty nice. This is not school. You're not being graded. There are no wrong or right answers. They're your opinions. Your opinions and your voice matter. So that being said, who would just by a show of hands or thumbs, or if you just want to, you know, loud and proud, go ahead and shoot it out. Who wants to take a guess at what the average attention span is for most adults and young adults, meaning everyone on this call today? Who wants to take a guess? Uh, I'm just going to look down and see if I see any thumbs up or anyone wants to just come up with it. Five Again, minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Who else? Uh, 10 seconds. I'm sorry, say it again. 10 seconds. 10 seconds, okay, thanks, Jerry. 30 seconds. 30 seconds, let's get a couple more. I'm not gonna ask everyone because that would take too long, but just a few more. 15 seconds. 15, 15. 10 minutes. minutes. Okay, I've heard 10 minutes, 15 seconds. Five seconds. Uh, five seconds. seconds, yep, I'm seeing 30 seconds on the chat. And Hanson or Katie, if there's questions that come up in the chat, would you guys be able to just let me know? Because I probably won't. Minutes. My eyes won't be there. So, 15 seconds. Good. Thank you all for your thoughts. Um, I'll close that question down just for now. And I'm just going to let you know, this is not my research, but I researched this along with other uh, areas as it relates to effective communications. Nine seconds. So for those of you that guessed five or nine seconds, you're right in there. For those of you that were thinking or that didn't guess or just thinking, oh, it's probably five minutes, it's probably 10 minutes. Is anyone just a bit surprised or shocked at that? Just a show of thumbs. Does, anyone, does that just shock anybody just a little bit? Here's why I'm sharing this, just to get you guys thinking a little bit. If the attention spans of most adults and young adults, meaning everyone on this call, is nine seconds, doesn't it make sense for us to all communicate as clearly and concisely and confidently as possible? Let that just kind of sit around and wash over you for a moment. With the tension spans being what they are, and there's studies out there as to why attention spans are so low. I'm not going to get into the weeds or get to the granular level, but it just makes sense. Everyone's attention spans is minimal. And if you're in a job interview and you need to make an impression or you need to answer questions that are being asked of you, be clear, be concise, and then be confident. So those are the three C's that we'll kind of maybe touch upon a little bit today. I want to ask another question. Um, I know I just, uh, uh, Hanson put me on big screen and that's okay. Just by a show of hands, maybe there's a way for me to see everyone, uh, but there's over a hundred of you, so I probably won't. Uh, now I see Katie full screen. Now I see you. Uh, let's do this. Who here, by just give me a, a show of, of hands or thumbs in front of your face so I see that you're with me. Who here likes to be understood? Who here likes to be understood by other people? Okay, I'm seeing some thumbs up on the screens. I'm seeing mostly thumbs up. Hanson, is there a way for me to get a gallery view by chance? Uh, I'm seeing Katie yeah. full screen. Now I see you full screen. And uh, well, as you're thinking about that, for those of you that raised your hands with that, go ahead and put your thumbs down or hands down. Most of you gave me a thumbs up that you want to be understood. Now, second question to that is, who of you, by a show of thumbs or hands up, who likes to be understood, but who likes to understand other people? Again, I asked you first, do you like to be understood? Now I'm asking you, who likes to, who likes to understand other people? 
Okay, I'm seeing, well, from, the, from those that I can see, I'm seeing mostly thumbs up. So let me ask you, Chloe, can I just ask you to unmute? Well, you're already unmuted. What do you think it takes, just from a high level overview, what do you think it takes to be understood? Um, first of all, I think the other person needs to be willing to listen. So maybe like empathy. And on your end, you need to be like concise and like be clear with what you want. No fair. You probably read my notes. But yes, absolutely. It's all those things. Uh, Jasmine, am I saying your name right? Uh, yeah. Perfect. Um, so Chloe just kind of gave me her thoughts on what does it take to be understood? What do you think it takes to understand other people? Just what's your, again, remember, whoever I asked these questions, remember I said it earlier, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just your opinion. Uh it's just like Chloe said that you have to be willing to understand because if someone's not open to it, then there's no, like nothing's going to get through to them. Okay, absolutely. So let me kind of phrase this a different way. And obviously I'm making a point with this, so bear with me. I'm going to get to some key points, but I've asked you, all of you, do you like to be understood? I've asked you, do you like to understand others? Let me rephrase this in a different way and maybe put more practical words to this. Who uh, wants to take a stab at to take a, just either a guess, an educated guess as to what are the two elements of any conversation, regardless whether it's with your friends, your family, if it's at work, in your business meeting that you just came from, what are the two components of any conversation, regardless of the situation or setting? Um, Hanson, is there a way, I'm sorry if there, I don't mean to hassle you, but I want to be able to see gallery so I can see who's yeah. talking. Is there a way to do that at all? Because so, uh, whoever, and whoever just chimed in, would you mind just uh, saying it again? Because I think it got a little choppy, but go ahead and just repeat yourself, please. In trust. Trust. In I think trust. it's empathy also. Say it again. Eye contact. Eye empathy. contact. Empathy. Good. Okay. Um, Understanding. Respect. Understanding. Good. Respect, I heard. Good. Speaking and listening. All right. Who said that? Hearing. Natasha. Got it. Who else? Uh, Matt, real quick, I think you can change your view if you just go up to the top right where it says view and you click on gallery view. Well, let's just teach a really old dog some new tricks. Ha <laughs> ha. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. Katie gets the Milky Way prize, whatever the candy bar is that I don't have to hand out today. Um, so good. All of those are absolutely part of the two key elements. Let me just kind of share where I'm going with that. There's two parts of any conversation. And again, regardless of whether it's a business meeting conversation, for example, you all just came from your first business meeting of the week, I believe, uh, or if it's a conversation at home with whatever your family sphere looks like, if it's in a relationship, and when I say relationship, that could be a personal relationship, could be a social relationship, could be a business relationship, any conversation, there's talking and there's listening, okay? Period, the end. Those are the two parts. Now, I'm gonna add one other piece to this. Uh, Maria, what do you think, uh, unmute yourself, because I'm gonna ask you a question. What do you think of those two pieces, meaning the talking or listening, what do you think we control? Which, which element do we control? What's your guess? Um, I think it depends on uh, if you're like given the message or you're taking the message, mm -hmm. but normally it depends. Well, if I'm given the message, I'm controlling the talking, right? Absolutely. And if it's in the other, like if, if I'm the, the one who's receiving the message, I'm not really sure. Maybe you can control um, the way you are receiving the message, but not anything else, like not really anything else. Okay. You are absolutely all around it. So it's perfect. Uh, and I saw someone had chimed in with uh, speaking. I'm sorry. Someone may have chimed in on the, on the chat room there. Um, yep. Interpretation. So here's where I want to go with this. And this is not just my opinion. This is just, it's fact. There, what you can control, meaning all of us, is the way we communicate our message. That's the part we can control. For example, we can control if we're angry at someone, we will probably have a way to control. Someone will be able to sense that. Uh, our intent, our spirit, our tone, that's the part we control, the person that's speaking. What we cannot control 
is how someone receives it. And I think that's what Maria was just alluding to and touching on. And it's a great, uh, great piece that she said. So you can control your messaging, but you can't control how someone receives it. The first bit of wisdom or insight or knowledge that I want to share is this. I think we all have smartphones. I think we all text. I think we all DM. We all use social media. I'm just going to go on a basic set of assumptions that we all communicate that way. And there's nothing wrong with that. With one exception. It is impossible to decipher the three key pieces of having a conversation is spirit, intent, and tone. Uh, anyone here in the last 24 hours have a miscommunication or a social media post that just backfired or you sent someone a DM or a text and like, well, that's not really what I meant, but someone interpreted it the wrong way. Show of hands. That happened anywhere? Just anyone last day or two happens a lot. So here's my first challenge. You guys decide if you don't accept it. I have a personal rule for myself that, uh, and I do this with my own kids, by the way, I have two, two teen boys myself is if a text message string or an email string or a DM over any social media app goes back and forth more than three times, I pick up the phone and I talk to that person. I challenge you to do that. As of the minute this call is done, the first text or DM string that goes back and forth beyond three, pick up the phone. You might surprise the other person. Like, what are you doing calling me? So it's just a new, it's a new, uh, it's a new element of the way I communicate now. I'm just, I'm testing this out to alleviate misunderstandings. I think we can be clear. Show of hands, who's willing to just accept that challenge or who's, who's not? And I'm totally fine with taking pushback. Who's willing to accept that little personal challenge? Okay, Maria, I'm going to go back to you just for a second because I see you. And then I want to, actually, Maria, hold tight. You're smiling and I appreciate the smile. Um, Han, <laughs> am I getting your name right? Okay, Vincent, let me go to you real quick. What do you think, uh, what do you think would happen uh, for you personally by just instead of going back and forth more than three times, you picking up the phone? What, what do you think would come of that for you personally? Um, probably better communication, better like understanding of kind of like what the other person wants. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, do any of you have a piece of paper and something to write with or something to write on by chance? Does anyone have anything handy? If you all do or the majority of you do, I want to put all of us, and I say all of us, I want Katie and I want Hanson and if Gina's still on, I want everyone to do this, staff included. Uh, everyone have something to write with and write on? I know I may have caught a little of you off guard, but it's okay. Even if you have a crayon, it's okay. Everyone, thumbs up. You got something to write with and write on? Okay. What I want to do is I want to wrap kind of everything I've just said, but I want to put, have you guys put it on paper because that's where it really happens. If you see it and you're visual and you put down some action items, you're more than likely to do something if you write it down. So for those of you that are ready, here's what I want you to do. Um, write down the top three ways that you most commonly communicate day to day. Now, as you blank stare at me going, Matt, what are you talking about? What do you mean? Let me reframe it a different way. Write down the top three ways that you most commonly communicate in your day-to-day -day life. Could be with your family members, brothers and sisters, and relationships, coworkers, colleagues, friends, tutors, coaches. Write it down. What are the three ways that you most commonly communicate? Okay, make sense, everyone? Or if anyone has any questions, please ask. Okay, just take like just a quick... 10 seconds and just jot it down in bullet, bullet point form. And Katie, I'm not sure if there's anyone that's chatting if they don't understand the question. I wanna make sure they understand, make sure I'm making sense. Is there anything that's come through? Um, no. Okay, good. Doesn't look like it. Okay, good. So for those of you that are still writing some things down, great, finish that up. So you just wrote down the top three ways that you currently communicate. The next thing right underneath that is write down for yourself. This isn't for me. Write down for yourself one way you would like to change the way you most commonly communicate. Just write down one way that you would like to change. Just personal goal. Write down one way you'd like to change the way you communicate.
So you wrote down the top three ways that you most commonly communicate. You wrote down one way that you would like to change the way that you currently communicate. The next thing I want you to write down in bullet form for yourself is what do you think the impact would be? What do you think would happen to yourself? What do you think would happen if you change that made the change that you just wrote for yourself? So go ahead and just write that down. Okay, and as you're finishing writing down whatever it is you're, you're writing down, again, I'd just like to review, you've written already, the top three ways you most currently communicate, one way that you would like to change the way that you commonly communicate or most for current, what you just wrote down is what do you think the impact would be if you made that change? And then the last thing I want to have you write down is what's holding you back? What is holding you back from actually making this change? And just be honest with yourself. This is for you. Okay, remember, this is for you. What's holding you back from making the change that you just wrote down for yourself? Go ahead and write that down. And what I want to do is I'm not going to ask everyone because that would certainly take uh, a, a long time, but I want to just get a small sample size. Um, Alexis, would you mind hitting unmute for yourself? Just what are you comfortable in sharing in terms of what do you have for the top three ways you most commonly communicate? What did you write down for yourself? I said either by cell phone, that's calling or texting, mm -hmm. um, in person, or I guess through a computer. Okay. Uh, mostly, is it? Oh, I'm sorry. Was there something else? I said mostly technology, I guess now. Yep. That's fair. Got it. Uh, is it Veronica? Am I saying it correctly? Would you mind just sharing? What do you have? Just real quick. What are the top three ways you have? I have messenger, iMessages, and like calling people. Okay. Uh, and let's just get one more. Uh, Vincent, what do you have for yourself? Sorry. Um, text, Snapchat, email. Okay. Can I stick with you, Vincent, just for a second? Is it okay? Sure. Um, tell me, what do you have uh, for, what did you write down for yourself as far as one way you'd like to change? Uh, I said I want to call people more instead of just like texting them. Okay. And great. Stick with me, Vincent. So mm -hmm. you got, you want to call more. Uh, and what do you think the impact would be if you made that change for yourself? What do you think? I said I would be more accountable, probably have better communication with people. Got it. And lastly, what's holding you back? Uh, I said being lazy and then also like lack of time. Got it. First of all, I want to say thank you. I know, I know it takes some courage to open up a little bit. I mean, we're not bearing our soul here, but it does. I do want to say thank you for sharing because uh, look, owning, owning laziness or being accountable, those words you use, that's big. So I appreciate you, you opening up. I'm not going to ask everyone to list what they've got, but is it fair just by a show of thumbs up or a show <laughs> of hands that what Vincent shared, um, what uh, Alexis shared, that there's probably some common threads for most of us. Is that a fair assumption that <clears throat> we're predominantly communicating over technology? Is that a fair? I don't want to assume and, and go down a bad path, but does that seem, seem about right? Yeah. So let me just do a quick pause here and let me just kind of interject with another quick interactive question. Some of you already have jobs, whether that's summer jobs, volunteer jobs, interns like Hanson, you've already got, you're working, you've interviewed. But for those that maybe haven't, by a show of hands or thumbs, who would like to have a job someday? Thank goodness I see all those hands. Go ahead and put your hands down. How about this? Who would like to have a job that they really like? Olivia's giving me a thumbs up and a half smile. Good. All right. And now it's a full smile. Good. Yeah. So it seems like kind of a throwaway line. Well, yeah, Matt, of course we want a job. And of course we want a job that we really like. Well, guess what? What does it take, do you think? Olivia, let me go to you real quick. Am I saying it right? Um, or there's yeah. a, what do you think? Just what's your personal opinion real quick? What do you think it takes to, to get that job that you really want someday? Oh, I, um, I guess maybe courage. Uh, okay. you, ha you, you must want to 
uh, do what you like, I guess, mm -hmm. um, because I guess it's just the purpose of your um, way of life, um, way of job, maybe, mm -hmm. um, just to find something that you really like and to have the maybe community, um, the place which is comfortable for you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for, for sharing. Where, uh, where I'm going with that, and, and Olivia touched on a lot of great things, my piece that I want to focus in on is the communication piece. And I know she mentioned it as, as part of her reply. Um, there is no better way to differentiate yourself, to truly, truly make a difference during any interview process, whether you're networking or whether you're interviewing with someone, than the ability to communicate clearly and confidently. For example... If I were to ask Hansen or anyone else here a, a question of, tell me, where do you, you know, tell me about yourself, which is a very annoying interview question, but it happens. To be prepared to talk about yourself, whether it's a 30 second elevator pitch, whether it's a specific question that someone asks you, the ability to communicate again with those three C's clearly, concisely, and confidently will truly be a differentiator for yourself. Because guess what? If you put some, put some time into practicing those skills and building those habits, you will be far better off than the applicant or the job candidate that is not working on those skills. And it's needed now more than ever. And how can I make that claim? First of all, all of us on this call said we communicate predominantly through technology. When you're in an interview, for example, that's the chance to shine when you're with someone either on a screen over Zoom, Zoom or if you're in the same room, but does that make sense with everyone so far? Is that track, you guys tracking this? So let me just kind of touch on those three C's because I think I, I've mentioned it a couple of times. Let me just share um, how to kind of put some of these habits into place, okay? And if you put these habits into place today, you will be better off tomorrow. And it's just like anything, whether you're a musician, whether you're into sports, musicians don't become good at just going up on stage and playing their violin or guitar. They probably put a lot of practice into that. If you're an athlete, you don't just show up on game day and become good. There's a lot of practice that goes into it. Good communicators don't roll out of bed and start communicating effectively. They put the work in. So clear, concise, and confident. Being clear, something that we can all practice. One of the key ways, my quick tip on how do you become clear is to eliminate what I call the clutter words. Hopefully, hopefully you have not heard me use what I call clutter words. Um, well, you know, totally, it's like, you know what I mean? That just comes from being nervous. It's completely normal, but if you pay attention and you eliminate those clutter words, you become more clear at communicating. When you're not clear, the other person that you are talking with, now remember, they, they're trying to understand your message, so why not be clear? That's just one quick tip. Eliminate your clutter words. It doesn't mean you have to talk a lot. It's okay to be short and sweet, but have the ability to self-regulate, self eliminating clutter, that will make you clear. The concise piece of that, the second C, I kind of mentioned it from the very beginning when we all met today as a group of, hey, what are, what are the attention spans? And I told you it's nine seconds. Rhetorical question is, why wouldn't you want to be clear and concise right away? Attention spans are low. Be concise, make your points right away and make them clear. And then the last C is confidence. Confidence comes from practicing. It's the case with anything, whether you're a public speaker, whether you're a chef, you, the practice is what's going to make you better at your craft. And communicating clearly is a craft. Building effective communication skills, it's, it is a, it's a habit. And it needs to be put into place because you all raised your hands if you want a job. I'm using the job as the example. But with, during that interview process and when you're meeting with people, business executives, even if in a business meeting that you guys just came from, if you, if you have the floor and you have the opportunity to make a clear presentation, whether you're asking for funding, either asking for a job, put these three C's into place. Keep them in the back of your head at all times, and you will slowly and steadily become a better communicator. And I think you will truly see 
the difference if you put those in to place. I want to save a few minutes, uh, which is right now, to see if there's any questions at all. And there is no such thing as a bad question. But I want to make sure if there's anyone that wants me to clarify something, if there's anyone that wants me to elaborate on something, I want to give you guys the last three to four minutes to ask any questions that you might have uh, just from anything you may have heard so far. And Katie and Hanson, if there's anything that comes through in chat, please let me know. Sometimes silence is okay. And I've always got more that I can share. So if there's no other hands, uh, Maria, you know I'm going to pick on you in about two seconds because I just see you right in front of my screen. I will not pick on anyone. Let me just let me just kind of finish with this then. If there's no questions, and look, I do a lot of this. Um, oh, could you please elaborate on how to become confident? Great question. The confidence comes from the practicing. It's like anything. I, I, if you put these elements of becoming, eliminating your clutter, which will make you clear, making your points short and sweet, which makes you concise. If you start to put those first two pieces into play, then you become confident. The confidence comes from the practice. And I encourage you all for yourselves, not for me, the, the next meeting you're in, the next conversation you have, eliminate the clutter, use, eliminate those filler words, Make your points short and sweet. Elaborate when they ask you to, but make them short and sweet. And the confidence comes. It's a great question. Who else has any other questions that came through? How do you think we should prepare for an interview? Uh, I think there's, well, that's a really great question. I'm not sure if I have a whole lot of time uh, for that. But if Katie would allow me, I would be happy to send an email to Katie or to Hanson with some of my personal tips. And maybe she can distribute that out. Um, I would be happy to do that. Another, what's the best way to network? Again, wonderful questions, awesome questions, but that takes a little more time than I may have today. Um, maybe if I ask Katie and uh, some others nicely, I'd be happy at any time to come back and talk about those two elements because how do you network and how you communicate who you are and how do you ask good questions and how do you listen? Really, really instrumental in a job search. So I'm happy to come back at any time. I'm sorry, I don't have the time to do that right now. Let me just wrap up with this though, <clears throat> unless there's anything else that's come through, is you're probably thinking, why does this matter? You know, what does this mean to me? Why should I, why should I do any of these things? Well, it does matter. You may not think it matters right now, but let me just go back to a question I asked you all earlier is, do you want a job someday? Do you want to have a job you really like someday? And you all categorically raised your hands. It should matter because the way you communicate will help you get that job. The way you share your story the way you articulate who you are and why you would be a good fit for that company, the way you can communicate that is going to be far and wide better than handing over someone a piece of paper and saying, hey, this is my resume. That's why it should matter. So I hope that makes sense. And that's what the, the one thought that I want to leave you with. But if there's any other questions that Hanson, can you help out? Or Katie, if there's any other questions that have come through that I may have missed, um, but I know, that, I know that's my time allotment. I wanna be respectful to where you guys need to be today, but I appreciate the opportunity to share what I personally believe are really important skills. I hope you'll take it to heart. I hope you'll consider those challenges that I gave you earlier. Read the notes that you took for yourself. They're all right there in black and white or whatever color ink you use, but take ownership of it and be accountable and just put some of those uh, pieces into play. You'll be glad you did. Um, anything else, any questions that I may have missed? Can I ask you a question? Absolutely. So, um, the social eyes is the main thing in our life, I think. And when you're communicating with people, um, and they are disagreeing with you or something. And, um, uh, if we need, do we need to stay calm, like, uh, we should not let our emotions to control our actions. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Uh, was that was that a statement or, or I'm sorry, was that more of a question? Because it's a good statement. Uh, do you think uh, we should let our emotions to control our actions? Okay. Well, my my first, it's a great question. Do I have time? So I want to make sure are we doing okay. Um, sure. This is the last question, guys. Okay. Uh, and I appreciate the question um, there. When you have a high emotion, 
or what I call a high stake conversation, or you have a conflict type of a conversation, I always suggest to always have that conversation in person or at a bare minimum over FaceTime, not over the phone. You want to see that person's face. You want to see their, their body language, and you want to be able to have the natural give and take that that type of conversation requires. Here's my quick gut reaction to that. And my advice would be if there's a, if it gets emotional and you just feel like you are going to uh, not be productive in that, in that moment, say, look, you know what? This is a really important topic for me. It's really important topic for you. I feel that I may be better off if we can just have this conversation in one hour from now, that will allow me to be, you know, get myself a little more calm. And I think it'll be better for both of us. That's one suggestion. Number two is, yeah, you, the, minute, the minute one person escalates, the other person is going to escalate too. And so if it's a high emotional topic, that, those are my quick reactions is absolutely need to have it in person. And I'll just add with this, having a high emotion or, or trying to resolve a conflict is not about you winning or it's not about me winning the conversation. It's about finding where you can agree. Even if you agree to disagree with someone, you're both understanding that that's where you've landed. And that's okay. It's okay to disagree with people. That's human nature. But as long as you both have sorted it out, you've, you've spoke your piece, you've allowed the other person to speak, and you've listened to them patiently without interrupting, and you just say, listen, I think we're at a disagreement. We both agree that we're disagreeing. That's okay. 